When Sonic Forces was first unveiled at the tail end of Sonic's 25th anniversary event, I couldn't have been happier. From the team that brought you Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations, the reveal trailer said, that alone was enough to light up my hype sensors. After all, for those of us who know the so-called Sonic cycle hasn't applied for over a decade, Colors and Generations stand as lasting proof that Sonic in the Third Dimension can play nice together. In fact, 2013's Sonic Lost World was rightly criticized for, among other things, abandoning the Boo-style gameplay formula that had endeared so many to Colors, Generations, and the Day stages in Sonic Unleashed. And that's why the idea of Sonic Team taking a page from their own book and returning to this formula for Sonic Forces was so exciting. Sonic Mania had been announced literally minutes prior as an authentic return to form for classic Sonic, while Forces would bring modern Sonic back in the form that had finally proven his viability in the first place. Sega's plan seemed foolproof. Of course, we already know how the first part of this plan turned out. Sonic Mania released just a couple of months ago to rave reviews across the board and is widely regarded as the best thing to happen to Sonic in more than 20 years. But what of Sonic Forces? Has Sonic Team managed to deliver on the promise of a definitive follow-up to Colors and Generations? Well, no, not really. As it turns out, Forces is an odd mishmash of half-realized ideas and odd concepts that don't really feel like they go together, or even like they were completely thought through. Some of the individual components of a great modern Sonic game are here, such as the Boo-style gameplay I mentioned earlier, and Forces does occasionally achieve moments of greatness rivaling the best that Generations and Colors had to offer. But those moments are always fleeting, and the time in between those moments is mostly hampered by uninspired level design and a focus on brand new elements that feel like unnecessary dead weight at best. This point is perhaps best exemplified by the game's bizarre focus on the hero character, a blank slate avatar you can model after one of seven different animals and outfit with an utterly mind-boggling number of custom clothing and accessories. You then get to see your creation interact with and work alongside Sonic and his friends throughout the entirety of Forces' story as the game's third playable character, and I admit there may be a certain appeal in that for specific audiences and age groups, an appeal that is lost on me personally. But either way, the problem is that after all is said and done, the hero character offers almost nothing of value to the game other than their astounding meme potential. Gameplay-wise, the hero character simply plays like a low-budget version of modern Sonic. They have a wire hook that serves the same purpose as the homing attack but feels far less satisfying to use, and instead of Sonic's beloved boost ability, they use a variety of handheld weapons called Wispins that are massively unbalanced in the player's favor across the board. The first Wispin you get, a flamethrower, is more than capable of demolishing anything the game throws at you with little effort, and as such, the game doesn't offer any incentive to explore other Wispin types other than alternate pass through a level that occasionally require a specific Wispin ability to access. Like the hero character in general, the Wispins just feel half-baked and haphazardly implemented. And just in case you think you can more or less ignore the hero character outside of a few exclusive levels, think again. Pretty much the whole game is anchored around this avatar-like presence, to the point where there are nearly as many hero character levels in the 30-stage campaign as there are modern Sonic levels, with classic Sonic bringing up the rear. And other than a handful of gimmick-focused mini-stages you can unlock by collecting the five red rings in each level, the only rewards you'll ever receive for accomplishing anything in Sonic Forces are new clothing, accessories, and wispins for your hero character. Unfortunately, Forces likely wouldn't have fared much better even without the hero character's baggage weighing it down. For example, classic Sonic's presence in Forces feels similarly unjustified and half-baked. Not only does he get the least amount of playtime of all three characters by a decent margin, he also doesn't have a single level in Forces that is as fun, memorable, or well-designed as any given classic Sonic stage in Generations. None of the classic Sonic levels in Forces are outright awful, mind you, and some can be fun in the moment, but they all share the same ho-hum, uninspired level design that permeates the rest of the game. And yes, that sadly includes the modern Sonic levels as well. As it turns out, fans were right to be worried by what appeared to be an alarmingly short, straightforward modern Sonic stage in the recent Forces demo for Nintendo Switch. Other than a couple of genuinely great ones that show up toward the end of the campaign, the modern Sonic levels and Forces are surprisingly brief affairs that strongly favor protracted 2D segments over the 3D gameplay that popularized colors and generations in the first place. And considering the fact that all of Classic Sonic's and around half of the hero character's gameplay is already 2D, I'm once again left with the feeling that relatively little thought went into how, or even if, all of the different elements and forces would fit together. For example, how many Sonic fans were honestly asking for Green Hill and Chemical Plant to return yet again? Both zones already featured in Sonic Generations and, much more recently, Sonic Mania. 
and not only are they back again in Forces, they both serve as the setting for multiple stages in an already brief campaign, limiting the game's scope in what feels like an obvious effort to save development time by reusing assets. And while we're still on the subject of oddly random and half-baked design elements, I should touch on the quick-time events that pop up in some stages, including the modern Sonic and Hero character-powered double boost ability that has been shown off in trailers. Now, I don't intrinsically hate quick-time events, but to my dismay, these QTEs and double boost sequences don't require any player input at all. The game does a decent job of making it look like players need to participate, but you can literally put the controller down during these sequences, and all you'll miss out on is extra points. Once again, I'm left wondering why these things are even in the game when they add literally nothing of value to it. There is one unifying element that all three playable characters share in common, but unfortunately it represents the biggest problem with forces. Poor controls paired with utterly nonsensical platforming physics. I can't tell you how many bottomless pits I've fallen into thanks to Forces' bizarre concepts of momentum and mid-air physics and how those things should work in a video game. Making precision jumps is an exercise in frustration more often than not thanks to each character's sluggish mid-air movement. Thankfully, checkpoints are common and Sonic Team has graciously done away with the concept of lives for Forces, so you'll never experience any major setbacks no matter how many times you die. Much of this review has been deservedly negative, but let me be clear, Forces isn't all bad, and there are indeed some elements worth celebrating other than generous checkpoints, the removal of lives, and a couple of stronger levels later in the game. Forces benefits from a hilariously grimdark story that takes itself completely seriously, resulting in wonderful moments like Knuckles solemnly remarking on the horrors of war. Some may understandably see this as a negative, but with strong voice acting across the board from Sonic's usual stable of performers, I see Forces' bizarrely nonsensical story about Sonic and friends taking back a world conquered by Eggman as a bright spot injecting some genuine charm into an experience that is otherwise mostly bland and unremarkable. Forces also benefits from a strong visual presentation, at least on the PlayStation 4, which is the version this review is based on. The PS4 version of Forces outputs at 1080p and maintains a smooth 60 frames per second at all times, lending the game an especially elegant, polished look that isn't necessarily carried over to other platforms, particularly the Nintendo Switch version, which outputs at 720p even in TV mode with a frame rate cut in half to 30 frames per second. Still, Forces is a great-looking game at least on the PS4, and even if the level designs aren't inspired, the attractive locations they're set in certainly are. And then there's the soundtrack led by Modern Sonic veteran composer Tomoya Otani, which maintains the series' impressive musical pedigree even as it takes some risks and delves into genres you might not expect from a Modern Sonic soundtrack, including drum and bass, electronica, and even Eurodance. The hero character's levels in particular benefit from some deliciously cheesy vocals, which feels like coming home if you're a longtime fan of Sonic soundtracks, and in particular, Sonic R. It doesn't all work, and there are some genuine low points, mainly the majority of classic Sonic's level themes, which suffer from the Sonic 4 effect of sounding like they were composed using Sega Genesis hardware without any understanding of how to make that hardware sing, quite literally in this case. But the majority of the soundtrack lands right on the mark and is reflective of Sonic's typically high musical standards. It's just a shame that Sonic Forces in general fails to exceed or even meet the expectations previously set by Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations. If Sonic Team had stayed the course and truly designed Sonic Forces to be Modern Sonic's next big game, instead of burying him underneath all the hero character nonsense and a universal regression in control and level design, this might have been a very different review. Instead, Sonic Forces just left me feeling meh. While it does benefit from a strong audiovisual presentation and there are moments of generations-like greatness toward the end of the campaign, the rest of Sonic Forces is defined by a combination of half-baked ideas and forgettable level designs that plant it firmly in the realm of mediocrity. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on social media. You can find all the links you need in the video description below. Otherwise, keep it on GameXplain for more on Sonic Forces and all things gaming.